What's going on guys? I wanted to make a little video here in regards to a couple questions I've gotten recently um, from some newer technicians, guys kind of just getting into the trade. Um, they were mentioning what kind of tools they should buy and should they buy high-end name brand tools or should they buy something on their, their minimal budget because they're just getting into the trade. So I sort of wanted to address that the best I could. I laid out a few different items up here um, just to kind of give you guys an idea. Uh, make it a little bit easier to go over, but you by no means have to go out and buy the latest and greatest tools of everything. Tools get really expensive. They change constantly. It's kind of like computers. You go out and buy the latest and greatest. Six months later, you have outdated stuff and everybody on the web is telling you that you need to upgrade because what you have is garbage. That's simply not the case in most instances. Um, so again, what I want to show you is that you don't have to go out and buy the most expensive products on the market. I know we all, including myself, I test a lot of tools and things like that. So I'm showing you newer products. That's not saying that you have to go out and get those products. I'm just showing guys that are out there, guys that have been in the industry, uh, what is available to them. So if you're just getting started, don't go out and break the bank. Um, just get some some lower end tools that are still going to be reliable, but again, isn't going to break the bank for you um, because again, your, your finances are probably going to be a little bit lower than somebody that's been doing it for 10 or 15 years. So um, up at the top, the top row up here is going to be different types of ways to check refrigerant charge. Um, you can start with the lower end, um, what I would consider just analog gauges. There not the most accurate thing in the world, but as long as you're not dealing with anything super critically charged, uh, it's going to get the job done. It's going to going to be very accurate, um, maybe off one to three degrees, um, something like that. But again, uh, it's not going to it's not going to be the end of the world if your superheats off two or three degrees. But you get the analog gauges, the little stub gauges. I prefer because you minimize the amount of refrigerant you could potentially lose over refrigerant hoses. Um, you would pair this with some sort of temperature clamp. Just here I have the, just one of the field piece K-type clamps. Again, nothing super accurate, but it will definitely get the job done, especially if you're new in the trade, kind of getting your feet wet and uh, that kind of thing with being able to do the job without breaking the bank. But the only caveat to these would be you're going to be limited to the amount of refrigerants that you can check um, with these type of gauges without having to go out and purchase another one. Um, so just keep that in mind. Again, it's going to depend on what you actually are doing for a living, whether you're dealing with uh, residential equipment where you're only dealing with like one or two types of refrigerant, maybe three or four when you start going into R22 replacements. Um, but for the most part, you're dealing with maybe two or three, whereas in refrigeration work, you might be dealing with a half dozen or more. So just keep that in mind. Next up, which I use for a very long time, still use on occasion, is the Testo Smart Probes. They are very inexpensive. Um, usually they're running somewhere between like under $100 uh, per probe. I think it's like $60 to $80 per probe. You get a whole lot more refrigerants um, that you can use on here. You get a little more accuracy because you're not dealing with the analog, you're dealing with something digital. And um, again, small, compact, you're not losing a lot of refrigerant. You have the clamps that go with them. So this would be like a, a second option um, above the analog gauges that I would suggest. And again, none of this is set in stone. You can sort of mix and match, do what you want. Next would be something like a digital manifold. This is just a Testo 550. Pretty basic. Again, with this, you're going to have the hoses, so you're going to get a lot more refrigerant loss or potential for refrigerant loss when you're using the hoses versus some type of smart probe or stub gauge. That's why I prefer the, uh, the smart probes and the stub gauges over any type of manifold. Over there, uh, you have the UEI uh, hub probes. Again, same thing. These are a little more expensive than uh, the rest of the stuff up here, but they're going to do the same thing. Very accurate, but again, you don't have to go out and buy a four, five, six hundred dollar set of smart probes when you're first getting into the industry. There's no reason in not starting with something analog um, or like the uh, Testo smart probe, something like that. Just a, a little bit of a people like to use the term entry level uh, tool. So 
Definitely nothing wrong with that at all. Um, over here we have just different ways of checking static pressure. You have a simple AAB manometer. Then you also have a Testo 510i. Both are very reliable. I've used both of them for several years. Um, had no problems with either one. The Testo is actually less expensive than the AAB. There's another half dozen different manufacturers that you can get out there. So by no means is this all of your options. There's dozens and dozens of options you can choose from. So these are just some things that I put out just to make it a little bit easier to describe. Um, as far as taking temperatures, air temperatures, things like that, um, you can go with something very, very simple, just some generic digital thermometer. I would definitely recommend something digital over something analog, especially when it comes to thermometers, just because the gauge is simply so small, your accuracy goes a little bit uh, a little bit out the window when you're trying to decipher a probably a one inch analog gauge versus something digital. Then you can go up to something like uh, one of these little field piece. Uh, can't even read that SPK2, I believe that's what it is, but just a uh, just a standard temperature probe, nothing crazy. This one doesn't give you any sort of humidity readings. Um, it's just a dry bulb. Same thing with this. Then you can get into something like the Testo Smart Probes, the 605Is, which are an excellent option. Um, they give you dry bulb, wet bulb, and relative humidity. These are the UEI probes. These give you a little bit more information because these also throw in enthalpy. But again, not something that you're, you're going to necessarily need right out of the gate. But again, just different options that you have right there. Um, like I said, there's a lot of people that are out there that will push one specific brand. Or if you don't have Fluke or if you don't have Field Piece or if you don't have Testo, then, then what you have is inadequate. And uh, that's simply not the case. You can get the job done with a ton of different, in a ton of different ways. So um, don't be handcuffed into one particular brand. Um, same thing goes with uh, nitrogen regulators. You can get something pretty inexpensive. I mean, some of the stuff you're still going to be paying a little bit of money for, um, but this is just a standard regulator. Um, you're going to obviously adjust your pressure. Works just fine. Gets the job done. No problems at all. Then you can get a little bit fancier if you want, and you can go up to like a VN500, which is going to give you the little dial. So you'll be able to purge and all that good stuff with just the twist of a dial. Again, it's more about simplicity and effectiveness. Um, versus the actual performance of the tool. Um, and lastly up here, I just have a couple micron gauges. Just a very basic CPS digital micron gauge. Um, accurate, inexpensive, and uh, gets the job done. Then on the opposite end of the spectrum, you can go to something like the uh, BlueVac Plus Professional, which is going to give you a whole lot more bells and whistles. You can use an app, all that good stuff, record the data, trend the data, that kind of thing. It's definitely not something that's required. Um, I know a lot of guys, including myself, swear by it. It's a great gauge, um, but I used this for well over five years and uh, had no issues at all. Very accurate. Um, as long as you're using the tools that you need to do the job properly, then I'm not very concerned with the particular brand that you're using. Now, there's going to be a couple things with that. You're going to have the questions of reliability. Um, you're going to have questions with accuracy. One reason that I don't have multimeters up here is because that is a little bit different in my opinion when you're checking voltages and things like that. When it comes to your actual safety, um, you're probably going to want to invest in a good multimeter. Um, I would probably recommend investing in a good multimeter using your money that you can save on instead of buying like um, like the VN500, for instance, or the BlueVac Professional. Maybe you save that extra money, you get the CPS, and then you use that extra $100, $150 to get a very good multimeter um, that's going to do all the things you need and do them reliably because that's dealing with your safety. Um, everything else, like refrigerant gauges and things like that, there's tons of different ways to get the job done. But uh, again, this is just a little video kind of showing you different options. Don't be handcuffed into what one person says about one brand or another. 
use what's good for you, buy what works for you financially, and then build your way up. You can always upgrade in the future. Um, but again, these are just some options. Hope this helps, guys. Thanks for watching, and we will see you on the next one.